And I am still trying to pull up the agenda. It's not playing nice for me right now, unfortunately. But I'm pretty sure the first item of business is considering the minutes for approval from our previous meeting. Um, unless I'm wrong, let's do that first. So I motion that we consider the minutes from our previous meeting for approval, if there's a second. Second. Awesome, awesome. thank you, Carol. Uh, all right, everyone say aye, who's for? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we will consider those approved. Um, does someone have the agenda up that can tell us the next item of business? No, I'm trying to get on my phone. Master plan update. Awesome, thank you. Let's move forward and go with our master plan update. And I think we might be turning it over to Chris or whoever else. Yeah, well, we're going to have a general master plan update. Um, they're not, they're not uh, entirely completed. Uh, water is much farther along and closer to completion than uh, sewer and storm, although they are right on the heels of water right now and they're very close. And so with that, I'll turn some time over to Neil. He'll talk about water and sewer in particular. And then Reed will talk about storm. You're on mute. All right. You guys see my screen okay? Yep. Yeah. All right, let's do the water master plan update real quick and let's just talk about a water system. Kind of five key components that I've broken this down to. Water sources uh, in an orum, we have wells and springs and surface water. Uh, number two is the treatment component. If you have surface water in orum, then we treat all that uh, basically through the Provo River water system. Once you have a, a water source that you're ready to, do, to give to the residents, you put uh, it in a water storage facility so that you can equalize the low use uh, and the high use times and give them a constant flow. Then the, the pipes distribute that water out and then uh, we meter it. So when we're talking about a master plan, I, I've kind of just the, broken it down to these five components where you plan for the future. You're planning on how to complete all of these things from, the, from today on, on into the future. We consider uh, a year from now, five years from now, kind of as the immediate future and then a short horizon might be 10 years, and then the long horizon is out to build out. Uh, so this graphic is a, is a graphic just to kind of show that it's pretty a complex system to operate. Uh, we, we have different elevations in Orem, and we have to regulate the pressures so that <clears throat> the tanks that provide that pressure up on the hill all the way down to the west side would give us, you know, 300 PSI, which for your home, it's normally 80, 90 PSI. So you wouldn't want 300 to uh, break out your pipes. These graphics all come from the master plan document right now in draft form. It's about 77 pages long. You can see from this just at the bottom here that uh, there's over uh, 1.8 million feet of pipe, which is a lot of pipe. Sometimes we get focused on our neighborhood or some of the main streets out there, but Orem's a large uh, five miles in each direction and there's pipes down every road to give water to everyone. You can see that uh, we, we, this is just to show that there's different 
uh, analytics that go into <clears throat> determining what pressures and, and what demands end up in certain areas of the city. Again, just a graphic to show uh, how we break this up, how we start the process. We, we find out where everybody's living. We find out where they're going to live in the future and where we might have more development. Uh, simple graphic here. The blue shows the constant water use that occurs throughout the, the indoor use and, and the winter. So you can see on either end of this, it's pretty flat. And then throughout the summer, it, it jumps up for outdoor watering. And these are the things that we have to plan for. We can't just plan for, you know, average water use in the middle. We have to plan for when everybody is using it. <clears throat> uh, the purpose of this graphic is, is to show these black dots where uh, the historic and measured uh, values come from for water production uh, right out here to 2020. And then we're looking clear out to 2065. <clears throat> and uh, if we continued on the same pattern that we were on, the blue line shows where we would need to be in terms of our water supply. The red line shows that with a conservation goal, uh, that we can reduce that number and really help our system out. And that's, that's what we're targeting to do. And, and we're actually on target for that. Neil, could you, could you blow up your screen to make it as big as possible? Yes. How's that? And Neil, when you say conservation efforts, you're talking about stuff like tiered pricing and our new water uh, metering that gives you real-time data so we can help people be aware of their usage. Exactly. Uh, those uh, efforts and educational efforts, uh, water audits that staff goes out to um, users' homes and helps them dial in, find leaks, um, all of those efforts the, the efforts that are uh, national with low flow fixtures, um, statewide with educational efforts, all of those efforts. Thank you. <clears throat> this graphic shows the different uh, ver various water supplies that Orem does implement. At the bottom gray part is our surface water that is treated at uh, Central Utah's Donne. Christensen Regional Water Treatment Plant up on the hill. And then the blue is our existing well sources. Uh, <clears throat> this gold bar is, is uh, existing spring sources. We're gonna implement water reuse very soon uh, to add an additional supply into this a stacking bar. And then the, the magenta or the violet shows the, the new well sources that are planned for development. And with those sources, you can see out here on the end, we should meet what our projected demands are out in 2065. Uh, this dash line shows where we would be and where uh, kind of calculations, if you only look at numbers today where we would be. <clears throat> we anticipate getting all that data back, being able to recalculate some of these figures and having that dashed line match closer down to the yellow line. A simple graphic here shows throughout the day, there's 24 hours in the day. Uh, when the graph is above the, the line, you are using more water than you have coming in. And so you are using up your storage. When the graph is below the line, you are filling your tank and using less. So you'll notice for Orem, <clears throat> we start filling the tanks around 9 a.m. Uh, that's because everybody uses their water throughout the night to water their lawns. And so that's where our peak comes. 
Um, is this averaged through the year or during the summer? This is a, a peak scenario. So during the summer. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, unfortunately, or however you look at it, uh, our water system is, is designed around the summer usage, similar to the way uh, roadways uh, are designed for the top use uh, during the day to get to your, to your work and back on I-15. If you drove I-15 at two or three in the morning, you would find a lot of capacity, but that same capacity gets pretty used up around seven or eight in the morning. <clears throat> Storage facilities uh, in 2020 uh, show that we are right around 10 million gallons short. Nothing surprising there. This is a, a similar result that we had before and, and we are just on the edge and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that with needing to build 10, more, 10 million gallons right away. Uh, in the build out scenario, uh, <clears throat> we're 21. So take away 10 of that and there's about 12 million left that we're gonna start planning for today. And thank goodness <clears throat> leaders of the past we're thinking about us right now in 2021, and we are reaping the results of, of, a, of a good water supply and a good system. I'm gonna go through the next few pretty quick. Just a graphic to, to show how we come to the conclusions that we come to. Each one of these dots represents a measuring point in our system of, of the speed of the water. And when the speed of the water is, is uh, getting high, the dot gets more yellow and, and gets bigger. And you can see right around the central part of this graphic with all that large orange dots, we're getting to have some, some larger uh, dots. And that's where we're planning to build uh, the new well and the new storage facility to, to help this area uh, reduce those dots down. In doing so, it will also uh, help us not convey water all the way from the upper east end of the city down into this city and be, uh, portion of the city and beyond down here. Uh, again, just, just, just to show you a little bit of the process and some of the things that we look at. We get some concerns with fire flows. Uh, those black dots say, hey, you need to look at these areas. And then that's where we determine we might need some uh, improvements. So this, this end result uh, shows some improvements and, and these red lines and, and some of these suggestions will show up later in a, in a graphic I'm gonna show you. <clears throat> Fortunately for Orem, uh, the next 10 year window of improvements for our city, it looks pretty small. Um, when you look at that graphic right there, you see some water lines that are coming out of our main area of water supply up here. You see a, a, a well up here around 16th North area, a well down here next to our tank near the community park area, uh, a storage facility here. And for now, we're thinking that 12 million additional storage would, would end up in this area somewhere, but not a lot of major improvements. And we can thank previous planners and, and, in, and those associated with that. There's a summary of those items in dollars is 18 million. Uh, then you get, you saw the graphic where I showed you all the black dots and, and these projects are gonna help alleviate some of those black dots because a lot of these areas have four inch main lines. And we talked about that in the last master plan, um, but there we've chipped away at them quite nicely and we're still chipping away at them. 
you'll see that those add up to right around $11 million. Uh, some future conveyance and, and everything, when you add all that up, $83 million. And, and that's the end result that tells us what projects we need to do. And then the rate structure and the financing is a separate um, analysis altogether. And that's where we've got to is determining with, with good bonding, uh, characteristics in place and low interest rates that that uh, would be a good idea now versus uh, a pay-as-you-go plan. And uh, this table kind of shows uh, the, the plan and the year plan. You add all those up and, and those are the costs down below. And we're currently working with Lewis Young, Robertson and Birmingham on how to fund this through user rates because that's how water projects are paid for. What, Neil, um, can you tell us what those, those highlighted projects are on there? Yeah, good question. The, the highlights reflect uh, down here. Let's go to this graphic. Show This shows uh, this table above in, in graphic form with these bar graphs and, and to what projects they relate to. So you look at uh, 22 and 23, it shows quite a large jump in how much we're gonna spend. That's because we're looking and, and analyzing the bonding uh, option because uh, our analyses have showed that bonding today can save us significant dollars moving forward. Uh, because of construction costs and low interest rates. Um, you can see the, the blue line is where the revenue was prior to 2015. And the black line was the resultant 2016 master plan, uh, getting rates up for a, a, a replacement budget to have available. And that, re that resulted in <clears throat> the rate structure that we have today. Uh, yeah, I got a question for you. Is yeah, that, yeah. Is that showing also the replacement of existing lines that are old and need to be replaced before they break? It, it is, and that's a great question. So you've got this uh, blue line. I don't know if you can see the way, where my um, cursor is, but this blue chunk right here uh, is related to some maintenance projects. And this purple uh, section is all related to system replacement. And Jim, that's, that's a really good uh, observation. You were here before, and this blue line represented nothing really significant in that system replacement. And we were really... Uh, had not yet uh, gotten into a, a full-blown system replacement plan, but the plan still uh, implements a system <clears throat> replacement, which is a critical component. Now I showed you the graphics before of improvements, of build-out improvements, and those are represented in the other colors. Well, as you're all aware, Orem's 100 years old and, and, and 101, and we've got a system that's going to start needing significant replacement. So we're still keeping that system replacement in. The, the red line is a, is a best guess effort of where we will fund the future if we bond now and, and take all of these projects that are right here above these lines. You can see that there's a lot of projects above it. And if we, if we bond for those now, we can drop those user rates down and put this funding uh, line in place. So I, I tried to give you 77 pages in, in a few minutes there. Uh,
but that's the uh, nice job end result. <laughs> you did well. Thank you. Can we get a copy of this? Yes. We'll send that out. It, it is still in draft form and uh, we're going through it and, and making some minor tweaks, but we'll certainly send this out to it, everybody who is interested. We could say it's hot off the press. We, we, we received this update to the water master plan right about the same, about Christmas time. So it was a nice gift, I suppose. <laughs> um, but we, we are, like I mentioned earlier, we are lacking or lagging behind, I should say, with sewer slightly and then storm slightly as well. And we have not yet received the sewer document or the storm document in its, uh, in its entirety. We have gotten some results back and we've reviewed different concepts related to this uh, plan, but we haven't got the full plan back yet. And so as soon as we do, I imagine we'll give a, a quick summary and send that out uh, to the group as well. Neil, on that graphic right there or that table, yeah. those, those projects that are highlighted are the bond projects. That's, that's correct. Okay. <clears throat> Neil? Yes. Uh, currently, we're having a, uh, <clears throat> a real dry winter season. How, if that con this continues, how will that affect our water uh, come summer? Well, fortunately, uh, if we go back up to this graphic here, uh, Orem is in a position with a diversified portfolio, meaning surface water wells and springs. Uh, our, our surface water supply is the most affected by the, the dry conditions. And we are still in the early phases of having uh, our, our water supply. So, so even though the, the dry conditions are gonna happen this summer, that is the, the beauty of, of planners in the past who have built reservoirs, Deer Creek, Jordan Nell, Echo. Uh, and then that's the fortunate thing that Orem has done in the past is, is acquire availability and access to those water supply sources in a, in a dry year. And our planning doesn't happen around you know, perfect years our planning happens around lower than average years so that we have that available. Uh, Brent, if we have years like this in the future where we get out here around you know, 2035-ish, 2040, there could be restrictions that need to happen due to uh, available sources that, that are less than what we would use. I don't foresee that happening, you know, next year in 2021, uh, but it, it might not be that far off. The other thing Orem does is we operate our, our supply and our surface supply specifically uh, like a savings account. Uh, and the savings account, unfortunately, is only a one year savings account because the water year is only one year long. So. We, are, we try to use uh, last year's water supply and storage supply uh, now, and, and the, the water supply that we're getting now, we're gonna use later. Um, so it doesn't always work out perfectly because we, we, don't, we can't save enough for a full year, but that's our operational uh, standard is to do that. And that's why it's important, um, Brent, for uh, Orm residents and the projects that we are, have moving forward with our metering and our water reuse to continue on that path. I'd like to add to that. So Council, Councilman Sumner, uh, this is Chris. Um, with the part of our advanced metering infrastructure rollout and the education that is component that's gonna to be tied to that, that'll allow us opportunities as well to 
educate the public on wise water use, on conserving water during outdoor uses, even indoor uses to some extent, although the greatest uh, impact and reduction in our, in our water deliveries will occur when people conserve water uh, during their, or changing their, their landscaping and, and, uh, and their outdoor watering habits and behaviors. So we're looking forward, and this is really good timing for us with the AMI project and the uh, metering projects that we have going on today to start educating the public even more. The governor's office has been educating the state of Utah through, uh, you know, save the, what is it called? Slow, uh, slow the flow, flow, save H2O. And that slogan has been out there since about the year 2000, 2001. And you continue to see advertisements and, and so forth. Um, but that's an excellent question. Like Neil mentioned, there may be a time uh, during a severe drought, multiple year drought, uh, and as population grows, we're, we may, may need to, to uh, uh, ration our, our, our usage outside. So today's not that day, and we do have multiple uh, resources that are available to us. Quite frankly, Orem is positioned as good or better than any other, any other city in the state of Utah and, and perhaps uh, most cities throughout the country because of our wide port, uh, diversification of our portfolio. So. Um, but as if you go out to the drought monitor at, I think it's called usdroughtmonitor.org or .com, you'll notice that this, the entire state of Utah is in a severe drought right now. And so that is uh, an excellent point that you brought up and we will continue to monitor, monitor that and its effect on our, on our water supply. Thank you. Well, that uh, concludes the water portion and, and basically the, the update on the sewer is as mentioned. Um, so I don't have any, any detailed graphics on that at all and those will come later. Thank so you, Neil. Stop sharing. <clears throat> Neil, do you have any updates on, on projects for sewer uh, that'll be incorporated with the bond? Uh, yeah, the, uh, I, I guess since we're, it wasn't that long ago that we, we went through this process with the sewer and, and we're diving head first into the projects that we were funding page ago. Uh, we have a couple of lift stations that we are replacing and upgrading. Uh, the spring water lift station uh, down uh, in the spring water area of Southwest and then the Carterville lift station that is extremely old. We've actually experienced some uh, challenges with that Carterville lift station that has resulted in some close calls and and it's on its last leg, you could so you could say, and that's uh, going to bid next month. So there's going to be about a million and a half dollars of improvements happening there. Uh, on an annual basis, we are rehabilitating about a million dollars worth of sewer lines throughout the city. About 80% of our sewer lines are, are concrete and concrete wears away in the sewer. And so we're, we're making great progress uh, on, on those rehabilitation efforts. The water reuse project in conjunction with water supply and, and sewer treatment is uh, about 50% designed. Uh, we hope to deliver water to the golf course, uh, the city soccer park, uh, the adjacent city leisure park and the facility itself uh, next spring with uh, not, not this coming spring, but, but get started on the construction and, and deliver water next spring. We're making the connections to the golf course uh, right now, so that when we do run the, the lines there, we won't have to disrupt the golf course during the golf season. So we're, we're doing some planning there to, to, to not disrupt that. Um, we have uh, capacity expansion that's going to occur with, with new belt presses uh, and add into the redundancy factor there. Sewer is an interesting 
uh, utility where it, with a water valve, you can shut it off, but you can't shut the sewer valve off. <clears throat> and uh, so we have to create redundancy and, and, and keep the water moving for sure with, uh, with those improvements. Did I miss anything there, Chris? I, I, no, the, those are all the highlights, I think. All right. Thank you. Okay, uh, Reed, I'll turn the time over to you to give us an update on projects in stormwater that'll be tied to the bond and, and any updates on the master plan that you'd like to give. Okay, let me uh, share my screen here. Um, let's start with that. Uh, what you're looking at is just a, a copy or a page out of the current uh, master plan. As Chris and Neil mentioned, the stormwater master plans, we haven't rece received the, uh, the initial draft for the update. Uh, but what you can see here are a bunch of projects that are identified uh, in the previous plan. And one of the differences between uh, the water master plan and the sewer master plan and uh, versus compared to the stormwater master plan is a lot of the infrastructure all most all of the infrastructure is in in those other two utilities however in stormwater uh, there's a lot of infrastructure missing so we're not planning to uh, replace uh, much of it rather put new infrastructure in and uh, our last plan identified a, a couple of projects in the southwest or the, the southeast corner of, of Orem uh, to abandon the West Union Canal. That's something that you've heard in the past. Uh, the West Union Canal Company and the West Smith Ditch Company, which use a canal, which goes from the mouth of Provo Canyon right around the bench um, of the Orem Provo border and then curls back up to the north. Um, and discharges into Linden Hollow. Uh, that particular uh, canal is being abandoned by the company. We rely on that canal uh, to uh, convey some of our stormwater. And because they're getting, they're getting out of it because they feel uh, that the facility is dangerous in certain areas, particularly right on the bench between uh, Provo and Orem. And we feel it's, uh, to, to limit our liability, it's best for us to uh, make plans to uh, get out of that canal as well. So the, um, uh, the, this most recent update has identified other areas. For example, uh, there's water that we need to get out near Center Street and take it, we hope to take it to the Provo River. So that, that project has been identified. Uh, one, uh, a couple uh, down near Carterville Road and 800 South these projects here to convey water down State Street to the Pro River. And then on the, on the south end, there are numerous, numerous projects. Um, I don't, in Zoom, you have to share a window, right? You can't switch to a spreadsheet. Can you see the spreadsheet now? Or is it, so it's still a map. Let me stop share real yeah. quick. And then I'll share this. Now you should see a spreadsheet. Um, this, uh, so the, what we've been going through with the consultant is they've, uh, we want to bond uh, for some projects and we, the most important ones are the canal abandonment and uh, the highest priority uh, projects there total just under $12 million. There's also some significant improvements that we need to make at the Taylor drain uh, which is on the west side of the city and conveys a large amount of our stormwater out to Utah Lake. So in total, um, we're currently looking at about just under $15 million of bonding for stormwater. Now, I, w w again, this is just draft form. This is what the engineer is recommending at this point. Uh, as staff, we'll dive into this and see what, uh, based on the rates that we're charging, how much debt we should uh, take upon ourselves, knowing that uh, we, we can't we can't strap ourselves with debt uh, for the for the next thirty years and just pay for these projects. Because you can see, 
that there are many, many other projects that we need to construct that are lower priority, but still needed. But if we don't have any money to construct anything for the next 30 years, and we're just paying debt for these very important projects, we'll be, well, we're in trouble. So we will be diving into this and see, determine what level of debt we want uh, to take upon ourselves and to, to bond for. Now, uh, I mentioned that, uh, that we're, we're building new, our projects aren't shovel ready, like several of Neil's, the water tank uh, and uh, water reuse projects and a few other projects are ready to go in, in water and sewer. Not so in, in, uh, in stormwater. There's some additional planning, including design uh, that needs to happen. So from an engineering perspective, uh, we've got some challenging issues, but also from a political uh, viewpoint. Uh, several of these canal abandonment projects involve coordination with Provo City as well as UDOT. So we need to make sure, well, in a way, we have to go and convince Provo that uh, to, to let us access their roadways and, and put pipes in them uh, because that's that, that it, it appears from an engineering perspective that's the best way to go, and there's a, there's a chance that they may not support that. So there's some political obstacles that we uh, that we need to uh, to to go through. Um, so I, I think that's kind of in a nutshell where we stand in stormwater. We've got some challenging issues uh, which we'll be working through. So this this current bond that that we're considering, there will be a small stormwater uh, component because there, we, we know that we can get a couple of projects done within the three-year time frame that are, that's required. Uh, but many of these projects will probably take longer than the three years that you have to spend the, the, the bond money once you, once you receive it. So we anticipate doing a, a separate stormwater bond um, at some point in the relatively near future, uh, but in order to get this current bond off uh, off the ground and get the water and sewer projects started, uh, we don't want to we, we don't we don't want stormwater to slow that process down. So we'll we will likely do a uh, separate stormwater bond in the hopefully near future. Any questions? We should uh, just, just as Neil pointed out, we'll be getting the the uh, stormwater uh, master plan as well as the sewer draft master plan, and we can send those out to the committee uh, for for their review. And if you have any input, we would certainly welcome it. But uh, they'll all three documents together will be well over 300 pages, I imagine, to review, and that's uh, it'll be some entertaining reading for sure. Okay, thank you, Reed. Any questions regarding uh, any of the utility master plan updates by any members of the, the PWAC or Councilman Sumner? Okay, I'm going to transition into a discussion. Um, I'm going to share my screen. And <clears throat> Can everyone see this spreadsheet here? Just to make sure. Yes, we can. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. This is uh, an export of our general ledger for our Fund 51, which is our water fund, as well as Fund 52, which is our sewer fund, as well as Fund 55, which is our stormwater utility fund. <clears throat> what we did, <clears throat> excuse me, is we, we've gone through this and, and dissected this and identified every project that would be bond eligible and that has a balance in the account. As you recall, uh, you know, five, six years ago, we were directed to do a pay as you go, uh, uh, you know, utility plan uh, replacement and, and repair and replacement and, and so forth. So uh, we have large balances on our books right now for projects that cost multi-million dollar projects. And um, what we've done is we've identified these projects to date that we could use this money towards uh, in part to, to spend down and reduce the bond amount in part 
and then also in part to reduce rates associated with these utilities. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna go through is a line by line on some of these projects. We have a water reuse project in our, our water fund. We have booster pumps in the water fund at 160 and 690,000. These, so these are, these are cash amounts that we have actually in, on the books right now. The reuse line for Lakeside is 200. And going down through this, you'll notice that <clears throat> the storage tank <clears throat> is, uh, is substantially funded. It's, we have $10.6 million set aside that's been uh, designated for that particular project, which Neil mentioned is we're right on the cusp of, of that project and designing that and bidding that out. The associated well with that that will be filling that tank is our what we call well number 10. We have $4.1 million set aside together for that project as well. So we have around $30 million in water funds available there. Hey, hey Chris, this is Casey. Yes. The 4.1, I, I noticed the budget for it was 2.7. Does that include additional lines connecting the system for it? Yeah, any, anything ancillary to that project and uh, pertinent okay. to that. Um, <clears throat> fund 51 is, as long as we keep these dollars within Fund 51, we'll, we'll be just fine spending it on, you know, you know, other related water types of projects. So we can shift and move money, monies around as needed. And I'll get into that a little bit more detail in just a sec. I just transitioned down to this bottom part of the spreadsheet uh, which is our sewer fund, water reclamation fund. I highlighted in green, you'll see areas that we've targeted that could be, uh, we could bond for projects that might last, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 plus years. Um, H2S rehabilitation projects, we could accelerate some of that work. We have a waste gas burner, belt press, a building addition, and so forth. In, in stormwater, we have these highlighted, I'm gonna just focus on the purple areas, line items here. West Union Canal abandonment along State Street, as Neil mentioned, or sorry, as Reed mentioned, all of these projects are, are uh, sub subcomponents of the West Union Canal abandonment. They would all be eligible uh, 2000 South uh, stormwater project as well. In the bottom here, we have a summary um, of these projects and the funds that are, are available. Uh, we identified about $39 million of total cash available from each of these utility funds. And what we're proposing is to uh, have six months of reserve set aside for each of these utilities. So from a bonding and bond rating perspective, we need to have uh, a minimum of six months of cash reserve for operational expenses associated with these uh, funds um, or these utilities. Down below, you'll see the summary of each one of these utilities that was highlighted up above. Uh, in total, we have around 25 million for water, almost nine for sewer and another five or so for storm. What I'd like to do is share with you <clears throat> the presentation from Laura Lewis, and we'll talk about how, so this is kind of our, our first broad brush approach of what do we have available on cash on hand? Now we need to look at what do we wanna target for bonding? We have to balance all of that out in our pro formas for each of our utilities with all of our annual operating and maintenance <clears throat> costs associated with each of these funds each of these utilities. We need to make sure we have enough cash on hand also to meet the, the bonding requirements that are set forth by the bonding agencies. So we have to meet their minimum requirements and, uh, and live by that as long as we're indebted uh, with the bond. We have to make sure we have enough cash on hand, for example. And then our debt service ratio is met. In other words, that we have plenty of cash on hand to cover that debt service. In every instance, we have uh, uh, multiple times what is needed. And so we're in a very good uh, financial position right now to move forward and move ahead. Um, 
I just shifted to another screen. Can everyone see this? Oh, you're, you're going to have to stop sharing and share it again. OK, just was wondering on that. <clears throat> Try that again. Can everyone see this? It says City Council yeah. presentation, utility system revenue bonds update. Yes. OK. What we have here is this is the document in part that's going to be shared tonight at our uh, Orem City Council meeting. At three o'clock, um, Laura Lewis from Lewis Young Robertson Birmingham will be presenting on the bond parameters resolution. The bond parameters resolution basically sets the parameters for uh, a bond, whether it's a general obligation bond or a revenue bond, so on and so forth. Uh, bonds need to have uh, before they move forward, the first step is to develop a parameters resolution by the legislative body. And that'll, that'll take place in two weeks, uh, assuming uh, nothing changes from what is being planned today. Well, how do I move down here? There we go. <clears throat> so Laura is gonna basically give an introduction to the bond parameters resolution tonight. After she presents, I'll give an update on the location of the 10 million gallon tank, which, which Neil and I will present on after this update here. Um, for the past uh, two months or so, we've had bi-weekly meetings with our engineering uh, staff, our city management staff, as well as Bowen Collins and Associates and, and our financial consultant, uh, Lewis Young Robertson Birmingham. So we've had uh, these bi-weekly meetings uh, with all of these uh, utility professionals and financial uh, advisors uh, to develop uh, this point, get to this point where we are today. Um, Laura has identified that there, there could be a meaningful, she uses the word meaningful reduction in rates. I would say primarily for water um, and not so much for sewer or storm but we are looking at rate reduction specifically in water. Um, these bonding, the bonding will uh, last a long period of time for that repayment, probably 25 to 30 years ago. We've been instructed to shift our, our, our philosophy to that um, instead of strictly a pay as you go. This will be probably a hybrid approach, I would say, where we're targeting those uh, we've used the term multi-generational projects and bonding for those today. Neil mentioned that we have a rates right now for bonding that maybe aren't historic, historically low, but they are extremely low. Um, that coupled with uh, inflationary construction rates that are very high, that, that meets for uh, an ideal <coughs> time to actually bond. And so the project summary, this is identifying in essence, what I just showed you in greater detail on that previous page, this even shows a little more of what available projects could be considered for bonding. And this totals to about $62 million worth of projects. We're not moving forward with that amount of a bond, but with this is just identifying those projects that would be eligible for consideration for bonding. Chris, um, yes. can, I, can I ask you another question? Please. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> I'm, I'm a little concerned when we tell the city council that there's a meaningful reduction in rates, especially for water. Um, one of the purposes of the reduction or the increase in rates was specifically for conservation. And, and I think if we eliminate that penalty for large water use, um, then our capital planning is not uh, as effective because event, uh, essentially what you do is you increase your peak. So I just want to make certain that, that the conservation aspect of those rates is still considered if any reduction is being uh, discussed. That is an excellent point, Casey. And uh, that is a concern that, that we do have <clears throat> as staff. Um, the rates uh, for e with each tier uh, they do go up around 25% for each tier. Uh, we have made some adjustments to soften that and, and moving that forward with the bonding, of course, we are gonna st still be able to uh, um, construct these projects. 
but you've raised a very, very significant concern that we do have as staff. We are addressing that and adjusting that accordingly, I believe. We have only looked at the rates um, in, in a draft form uh, as a proposal right now, and nothing has been um, set in stone at this point. Uh, so we will take your concern under consideration, of course, and we also internally as, as engineering staff and as public work staff uh, do have uh, and share that same concern. My, so I, my, I appreciate my recommendation that. would be before um, <clears throat> we do drastic reduction in rates, we get AMI installed and the education programs instituted so we can see uh, the conservation effect of AMI because I think that 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 rate and AMI uh, will have a big impact on uh, conservation and I sure would hate to lose that opportunity because conservation is a big component of that capital improvement plan. You're, you're correct and thank you Casey. Uh, our tiers um, will continue to have uh, a ratcheted upward um, increase as we go from tier one to two to three to four and there are penalties as or you're paying a lot more on a per unit basis. So the rates that will be proposed will still be promoting uh, the conservation uh, into the future and they will be adjusted, you know, prospectively as, as well. You know, it's interesting as we look back as, as, you know, for those that are like you, Casey, who were on this uh, commission back from the onset back in 2015, uh, we, uh, we, have, we have changed it we have changed our philosophy a, a little bit from pay as you go to bonding. And so while we have made significant progress, we have changed or shifted our, our alignment or our course slightly. I imagine that this is going to be a, a continued ongoing process. Any changes that we do make or recommend uh, in this, uh, with this fiscal year, of course, will be reevaluated on a year to year basis in support of the master plan. And, uh, and, and maybe, maybe that needle will flip back the other way um, from, from a bonding to more as a pay as you go. I think right now we have a pretty good balanced approach though that does address that conservation. One area that we do need to focus on even more significantly, I believe is a, a public education and public outreach for conservation. Um, people out of the goodness of their heart don't necessarily conserve there are those that do but those that receive a you know a bill that's maybe a little bit higher maybe will think a little bit uh, harder next time next month regarding how they do water uh, their yard in the you know subsequent you know prospectively moving forward so uh Chris, if i could ask you are you, if i remember right you said the ami is going to have a website and a mobile app is that correct it will is it planned that you'll put conservation stuff into that system so that people who, you know, most people are going to be having access to it through one of those and they'll be able to easily see, you know, things that we want to let them know about conservation? Yes. Awesome. That's a great point. So the, the educational tool will be offered through the water smart component of the, you, you know, the graphical user interface with the, with the public, the user you know, at, at their fingertips in the palm of their hand and their phone and or online. And so that will be available there. Um, so we will be incorporating that in and ramping that up as we deploy AMI. Will that be used for more than just water or will that only be used for water? It, it could be, it, no, it could be used for anything associated with billing, quite frankly. Um, it's very flexible and adaptable. So what we're looking at for the for the bond is probably something around 16 and a half to 45 million dollars. That's quite a range, um, but that's over a 25 year life. And we would assume an inflation or excuse me, we would hedge construction cost inflation and we would assume uh, basically uh, between two and a half and three um, percent for that for that net interest rate moving forward. The 10-year the uh, treasury note is around 
uh, it rose about 1% recently in March. Um, we're looking at a very good bonding opportunity at this point. Our, our net or our true interest cost that would be measured over that 25, 30 year period would be around two and a half, well, 2.4% for a 25 year bond issuance. And so what's gonna be proposed tonight uh, to the council is that uh, we define these parameters. The parameters are shown here. The maximum bond amount that would be recommended uh, that has been calculated in this analysis is, is $45 million over 30 years. Um, we are anticipating issuing a bond, probably something more along the lines of $30, $30 million in 25 years. We are not uh, identifying that dollar amount tonight for the actual bond amount, but we're identifying the parameters from which the uh, designated officers can operate. So basically it's, it's, uh, it's setting in motion by the legislative body, this, uh, this intent to bond in the near future. The mayor or the mayor pro tem, the city manager or the CFO for the city uh, might be given that authority. And they've historically, it's been the city manager. Um, so that, that, that's kind of a cursory review of what Lewis Young Robertson Birmingham will be presenting tonight. Um, we could bond as early as, under this approach, as early as March or April of this year. Will it follow this plan exactly as shown? Probably not likely but um, this is kind of a, a, a guideline for us to move forward. Are, are there any general questions regarding this? I'm not a financial advisor or expert, but I wanted to give you an update on, on the process that we're looking at. Well, I don't have any questions, uh, but I, you've done a really good job. And I know we have a, a great bond rating because of how you've managed the money. So I just, I appreciate it a lot as a citizen of Orem. We, we do have a great bond rating and uh, I think we've done a great job in, on managing our resources in the city and using our, our funds wisely. So thank you, Carol. I know that our, our time is up for our meeting right now. Before we, uh, before we close out, if I can move this. We can see your screen right now. I'm trying to, get, there we go. I'm trying yeah, to we, get can get, we can see that. Okay. I just wanted to share with you, <clears throat> and you're all aware of this, but we will be presenting to this or on this tonight in greater detail. Um, we had a dozen different properties that we've looked at regarding the 10 million gallon tank. We looked up at uh, IHC back when we were considering doing a joint tank uh, with uh, Vineyard City. Vineyard City has since decided to do their own, um, their own water tank in their city. That's the latest. So we were not doing a joint water tank, nor will there be a vineyard water tank in Orem based on uh, their latest um, projections. So we looked at other, everything shown in purple here these are all orchards or, or they were orchards. You can see this here was an orchard when we were looking at that uh, many years ago that's since been developed as a development. We've knocked on doors and talked to several people uh, regarding the potential for water tanks. As you uh, can imagine, it's a lot more expensive building a water tank on property that you don't own. And uh, we're looking at uh, several million dollars of just uh, real estate uh, in acquiring that. We then shifted back to maybe we can do something at our community park here or at one of these locations here in conjunction with the Alpine School District. And it has all led us to one location that we are going to be presenting on tonight, which is uh, this location at Orm Community Park, west of the Mountain View High School baseball field. This would uh, this would be a, a tank of about 420 feet in length, 200 feet width, about 16 feet deep. That's about 10 million gallons. And so that was a really quick review of that. But tonight we're gonna to be going to, into a little more detail on that. Um, but it's been, a, it's been a long process, it's been a journey. Um, 
and we're, we're getting to the end of that journey right now with, with this location here. As you can imagine, being in a neighborhood area, we, we have to do some mitigation regarding sound and noise or sound and, and uh, probably air quality, um, as well as uh, times of day, when to do it and so forth. And so we're gonna have a public outreach effort that's going to be, uh, be taking place with this project. Uh, that'll be quite extensive. We anticipate a firm like a Langdon Group or somebody like that would take the lead on uh, public outreach and education and providing updates throughout the construction and design process for that tank. Um, I know Casey's been involved with several multi-million dollar projects, drilling wells and building tanks and so forth. And I think he can testify to the need of uh, public out, a really good quality public outreach program. Central Utah does an outstanding job in that area, in my opinion. And so we hope to do something similar to what they've done in the past. Let me add, so the, the tank is a large project. The uh, well is a large project and the booster station that will uh, pump out of this tank is a large project. So there are three large projects that will be associated uh, with the rectangle there. Uh, and so it, it is a, a, a for probably a career defining project for most of us here that we are gonna embark upon. And uh, the magnitude of it can't be understated, but the need is also uh, extremely in, high and the location is extremely strategic. So uh, it, it, it didn't come down to this just by using Google colors and rectangles. Uh, all of those graphics that I showed before and then the computer modeling and the analyses led to this uh, decision. Thank you, Neil. Uh, Neil and I have actually gone two by two door, door to door out here. It's kind of ironically, but um, along all of these homes in this area here, I don't know if you can see my cursor. I think you can. And then along four south in this area, we've, we're looking at potentially acquiring some properties uh, for that well and pump house. And uh, that's all we can really share on that. Just letting you know that it is an extensive process, like like Neil mentioned, and it's been a great a great process getting to this point. Um, we appreciate the design or the evaluation from Hans Nell and Luce, uh, as well as Bowen Collins and Associates, who have led us to this point here. Neil had a graphic out there uh, earlier that showed the central zone in Orem. This is in the heart of the central zone, and this is going to take care of significant challenges that we foresee happening or occurring in the not too distant future. And uh, strategically locating it in the central zone here does remove the tank from Northeast Orem with all of the other tanks and the water storage. And it actually allows a, a bit of a diversification of sorts of our water uh, storage and supply by drilling a new well and tying that to a new tank in the central zone. And, and thereby uh, potentially eliminating the need to uh, install or construct new projects to convey water to this zone in Southwest Orem. So I, I think that this is going to save the taxpayers uh, millions of dollars in the end with this strategic solution. So- uh, hey, hey, Chris, just, uh, uh, just a nerdy question. Um, I, I know the outline is the finished outline of the tank, but the biggest impact is where do you put the dirt when you construct it? Have you yeah. looked into where that, that construction easement is gonna be? Uh, well, it'll be in conjunction with this, this park area of, of sorts. We haven't identified exactly where that will be. We'll have to create a, a kind of a, a spoils location where we can uh, remove the, the material and then export it off the site. We have had uh, communications with Eric Ellis, who is the uh, director for Utah Lake Commission, and they're interested in, in 
in a significant portion of uh, the exported material for the Walkera Way project, which is going to be occurring and starting here shortly on the, the banks of Utah Lake for some of their trailhead development and trails and so forth. Oh, that's great. Uh, do you have a need? Does Central Utah have a need, Casey? Or oh no, 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 we do not want any more dirt. We're we're building a 15 million gallon tank right now. Yeah, if okay. anybody has a low spot in their yard, let us know. <laughs> so, Casey, what are you doing with your dirt? Um, we're buying an additional piece of property and sticking it on that that property. It's it's awesome. a big challenge. It's a big challenge to get rid of. So I never that? thought about that. Is this at your your res terminal reservoir? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And is the design far enough along to know if is this a conventional tank or are you going to consider post tensioning on this, Chris? Uh, mo well, it, it's going to be buried, and uh, so conventional buried tank, whatever that might include. I don't know if we'll have post tensioning on this or not. Okay. Yeah. So. Just so you know, we're, Neil, Neil has done a fantastic job in preparing the RFP for this. We're looking to, to, to advertise this as early as this week. Um, and this will be presented to uh, Councilman Sumner and the City Council tonight. Chris, is it anticipated that during construction that you'd have to close the uh, tennis courts or that children's playground? Um, <clears throat> we have not gone down that far down the road, but I would anticipate uh, yes, depending on how we phase this, this could actually come out altogether. This pavilion is going to come out altogether. Um, this parking lot is going to be torn up altogether. Uh, so yeah, we'll have to have some some safety measures in place to uh, to ensure that children and and others don't get into this area. That's an excellent question. I, I think the tennis courts will remain open. I foresee the parking lot remaining open. I'm not certain regarding this here. We safety is of our utmost importance, so that, that may may require us to close this during construction. If you close it, would you be taking it out entirely, or just closing it during construction? Excellent point. We haven't gotten down that that far down in the analysis yet. This is all brand new. With that said, we could relocate this relatively easily to a new. Uh, another playground elsewhere in the city, and then at the end of this project, we could build something that's like this or even nicer at this uh, same general location. Someone may be very interested in that. Let me know after this call and, and, and we can talk. Okay. All right. um, well, we are very out of time. Uh, do you have any other business that you wanna bring up to the PWAC before we adjourn, Chris? I just want to, I'll be sending out a link uh, to the Zoom meeting tonight. It starts at three o'clock. We'll be on for, uh, for 50, well, for, let's see, for about 30 minutes total. Okay. And, uh, and Hanson Allen Luce representatives and Bowen Column representatives will be there. We sure would appreciate anyone, um, PWAC, who would like to be a part of that, who would like to chime in. And, and uh, if, if you feel like you can endorse this, we would very much appreciate that. I think we've, we've had your endorsement uh, to date on this whole process, so we, and we appreciate your support. So if you'd like to be a part of that meeting tonight, you can click on that. We'll start at three o'clock and I'll send that to every one of you after this meeting. So Chris, I think you can say, I'll speak for all of us, that you have the PWAC committee support on it and you can certainly verbalize that at the meeting if you wanted to. I will, thank you. Okay, if you don't have any other business, Chris, then do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. And a second. I'll second it. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for everyone's service and attendance. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Have a great day. I'll send you that link. Thanks. Thanks. See you all. Bye bye.